still I'm still expecting it. Um, don't, <laughs> don't don't anyway feel fulfilled. Um, probably the, the the nearest thing to highlight was the first time I dressed Princess Diana. Um, that was a fairly major experience. It's pretty going high, to though. Kensington Palace, um, and that whole that first time was was very special. Yeah, I couldn't believe it because she was at her peak. She was still very happy. At least we thought she was. And, um, she was married by that time. She was married, um, living in Kensington Palace, but nothing had gone too, too dodgy at that point. She was still playing the role of the princess. And do you, do you remember what year that was? It would have been the early eighties. And what were you dressing her for, just in general, or for? Uh, dressing for was always for trips to. Um, it was for example, she was going to um, India. So sleeves had to be longer and her body had to be somewhat covered and things like that. So you had to take all of that into consideration. But she was charming, great, always had a cup of tea on a tray waiting for me. And friendly. Some biscuits, friendly, lovely, um, pleasant, modest. Yeah, great girl. Was it Paul and Diana or was it... No, I think, I think it was more... Um, uh, what's his name? The rugby player, Will, Will, Will Calling. Mm. Yep. He was knocking at that door. No, I mean, in terms of the, oh. your, your interaction, was it Paul and Diana or was it... Uh, oh, yeah, it was. Oh, no, no, nice. no, it was, definitely, because as, as an Irishman, you know, I don't uh, bow to to um, royalty. I, 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 I don't courtesy. Yeah, I, by the same time, that's I, why you I, I shake nice hands, words. exactly, give her a kiss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I always kept in contact for quite a while. Every Christmas got her personal Christmas card and really all nice. that kind of thing. Up to, yeah, you, and you could see, in, in, even from the Christmas cards, how the relationship was changing, you know. Very close together, slightly further away and further away. Sort of she brought up the children very well. Yeah, they're good kids. Mm -hmm. They are very good kids in there. You know. Charles can't take any of the credit for that. Uh, who would anybody who would be my inspiration? Yeah, when you were starting out, you yeah, were uh, definitely George Romani. Um, Absolutely. He was the daddy. Yeah, he, he was. De and when I was starting off, um, Courage, uh, a long yeah. time ago, Courage, Ungaro. A man he came slightly later. Um, that's when I was living in Italy, working in Italy at that time. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was living in Paris, it was definitely Courage, Saint Laurent, and Ungaro. Courage, was, it was always that famous sort of... Um, Space block, age -y. yeah, exactly, block geometric thing. blocks, yeah, it, it exactly. Was always, all I can remember is like... Um, very sporty. Very sporty, but the first one, mid, sure. not quite so short miniskirts, but no, the miniskirts. No, but exactly. Very merry, it was sort of just pre-Mary Quantum. It was, it was roughly probably about the same time. Mary Quant did it in a different way. She brought it to the street, really, but yeah. Courage, Courage was, was the master. It was, it was almost a block, but was it uh, Matisse, or not Matisse, um, oh, what's the name of the, the artist? It's, which is now fading quite quickly from my mind. But is that very, Vidal Sassoon, very sharp haircut. Absolutely, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. that look. Very clean, very yeah. fresh, it's very, very modern. Sort of mod times as well. Sorry? Sort of mod. Yes, yeah, but, yeah, but uh, in a very nice way. It, it wasn't aggressive. Yeah, Paris was still very, very much of the older... Couture, yeah, very, and they had very little high street fashion. The ateliers and exactly yeah. while, while London was was very much Carnaby Street and, and, and all. Yeah, of that. because I I didn't live in London at that point, you know, so I wasn't really part of that. All the couturiers were there, so it's always that's there. right. And then they had their, their feast day, Saint Catherine, which, which which is the feast of machinists. Yeah, and everybody dressed up in in all their chiliers in Paris during that day and it was a it was a day it was like a holiday but but you were entertained by the company it was nice. amazing yeah in the last couple of years it's been pretty tough yeah um because i i i'm rather like a footballer i i get licenses yeah i license my name and i sure understand that so well. um so my business is based on licenses different areas we do children's wear or bags whatever and um the license i had for ladies wear uh, which ran for 10 years uh, ran out of money basically yeah. and um in 2011 2011 2012 i had to go out and try and find a backer mm. which was very difficult financially it was a difficult time number two they wanted the brand but they wanted Lock, stock, and barrel. You know, they 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 wanted everything that involves the the, the, the Porco Stello 
lifestyle. Yeah. And uh, and and the offers were pretty meager and pretty humbling. Mm. Um, so uh, I, I didn't go down that route. I wanted to, re to re retain my name, re yes. re re retain the the, the brands, uh, the the um, ID. My yeah, name. it's your brand, it's your name. Exactly. And um, so I've continued in a very small way. As you can see here, mm. uh, they're developing small ranges in the hope that I can build a, a, a small business gradually. I mean, didn't you look in primary to exports or? Um, I wouldn't be ready, you know. So really no, what, what, what I'm still looking at is is somebody who'd really like to take the ladies' wear license. Yeah. At the at the upper end of the market, um, and we and and do a sort of a, a joint venture. But it's, it it's, must be out there. It's quite difficult. It's quite yeah, difficult. It is. I can imagine it's. And difficult. then age comes into. It. You know, you long, long that? longevity. Who's going to carry on the brand? And I'm uh, coming up to that a little later. You know, on so, now. so it's a, yeah. You have to face more mortality, um, both career and physical. Yeah, yeah. In fact, the physical part I don't have a problem. It, it's more the on career. the career side than, than people's expectation. You know, and um, you, because you're in the business, people know your age. You can't really you can't even, hide it. I mean, you can't you hide it. You're anybody. Everything is. Exactly. Is, so um, yeah, that's been yeah the last couple of years has been tough, tough, tough for my wife as well. But um, at least I still own my own brand, and I get up in the morning and say, you know, get on with it. But you're still relevant. And yeah, you know. yeah, still relevant. I, I, I still believe in my designing. Yeah. I still believe I'm a good designer, um, and uh, particularly in tailoring. Yeah, there's not. There are probably not many people better than me in, in ladies tailoring, but um, it's tough. No, there's nothing I would have changed in my career because I believe in, I believe I I did what I wanted to do at the time. I suppose. I suppose. Um, I've been rowing my own canoe, even with a, a financial partner. I've I've always been the one who's, mm. who's called the shots, and maybe, maybe I should have allowed m a, a greater input from from people on the on the business side, because mm. you you can't be good at everything. And I'm a, I'm a I found that out somewhat late in life as well. I I'm a bit of a totally I'm a bit that. of a self-made man, yeah. and um, uh, and I've also probably. Um, Try to balance family and work. I've always believed, and I think it was Oscar Wilde who said, "The paths of glory lead but to the grave." You know. Yeah. So uh, trying to keep a lifestyle, playing rugby, doing things. When I was even single, I wasn't like Paul Smith traveling to China, to Japan to build up a brand. Yeah. I was, I was hanging around London or Paris or New York. Mm. Having a good time for as a single man, yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, I don't have any regrets. No, I mean, but the fact is, but yeah, I do think I could have maybe made some better decisions from time to time. Women, by Women. far, really, yeah. That's interesting. Oh God, why is that? Uh, menswear is sort of um, menswear isn't quite as challenging. You know. Right. Just, a little bit here, a little change there, and you're, you know, in good materials and um, and a good tailoring factory. Yeah, you can you can get through it fairly easily. Women's wear is is much more personal. It's it's really your reflection. It's your, and because you're a male, you're approaching a completely different way than than a woman would. Um, no, it, it's much tougher, but definitely the the satisfaction of when my wife she was in. We were, we were in Milan recently and she was wearing one of my dresses at a trade fair, yeah. fabric fair. But she looked amazing in it. Mm. And that made me feel great, you know. While, yeah, I, 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 I wear my own clothes in most cases. And, you know, I, you know it's, it's, it's a different, completely different. When I did British Airways uniform, yeah. seeing, seeing the girls that must in have groups been a big wearing the well. uniform. It's, so um, it's the appreciation of female form and dressing that Oh, way. totally. I'm a total right obsessed. There with you. Yeah. By, yeah, I still, I still find women attractive. God, yeah. Which is the whole credibility factor of non beige that we both do. It yes. just goes yeah. to show, you know, yeah. we're not quite ready to hang no up way. our. Um, no way, Jose. No. <laughs> it's 
staple engraving is probably black because it's slimming. Certainly for a man, I think a black suit, white shirt, and a nice simple narrow tie. Um, and I think sometimes you can wear trainers with a with with, with a suit as well. It it can look great. Um, so, so that's a great look in a, in for a man. Um, I I think um, and for for a woman. Um, you know, a well-cut black suit with a pencil skirt and a pair of nice suede court shoes and opaque tights um, and, and, and hair that's been groomed. Not, I, I, I think hair has to be either worn up or cropped. I really like sort of a cropped sort of um, a, a boy look from the point of view of a female hair, haircut. Very simple, Bobby, Bobby Brown type yeah. of styling. Um, and just very light makeup and um, yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean that covers the sort of smart, elegant side of it in terms of casual wear. I mean, casual wear. You sort of um, casual wear from for men is is it can always be a bit of a disaster unless they are comfortable wearing casual wear. Uh, you know this when when they had this dressing on Friday, dressed on Friday, yeah. You know that was a real disaster because you know <laughs> some awful things. There standing. were some terrible things going. Wasn't terrible, there? terrible, terrible. Um, you know, men just just jeans and t-shirt and keep it and a, and, and a nice a nice quality um, hoodie, you know, and be comfortable and cool and or nice polo shirts. Um, I mean, and you and I are both of the age we're talking about. We're both sitting here in Converse, white yeah, Converse and jeans. jeans. Exactly. And I don't think either of us look great. I don't think either of us look we're being anything no, other than what no. we are. Um, no way. No, no. I'll I'll work till I'm, but because I've, I've got a love for painting as well. Right. And I'll be having an exhibition in Dublin in a, in a, in a couple of months' time. So yeah, no painting to me is is the same thing as my real relaxation. So maybe from the point of view of fashion, I might stop, but then I'll just continue on painting. I I, I paint in my recreation. I haven't done a recent. I up to a year or two ago, I, I went to Putney School of Art in the evenings. Yeah, and it's a great way of of keeping your mind relaxed. And it's like photography. You know, we all have our. And I just think. Yeah. So no, basically I never thought so much about No, I, you know I I enjoy the challenge too much. I don't want some little young guy taking my spot and maybe John Lewis or Harris or I don't, want I want to fight right. it. Okay, I may lose, but at least I'm competing. Fight corner every time. I, I still want women to be wearing my clothes because to me it's not like making love to that person, but it certainly is getting closer than I would have when I was 19. It's a heavy courtship. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's a bit of foreplay. Yes. yes. Uh, certainly at least one of them will. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what do your kids do? I mean, you've got seven. We've got them. seven. Well, um, starting from, from the top, one's a broker in the city. He's the eldest. Then we've got Paul Emery. He, he works in retail. Right. Um, and uh, he he works for um, T M Lewin. Okay. Uh, then you've got Gavin, and he's a lawyer in the city. Then you've got Jessica, who's an opera singer. Robert's in in China. He's sort of like a business person. Yeah. He, he he works in Beijing. Right. And then the last two are both in art college, painting one in Wimbledon and one in. Another college. <laughs> One of those, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, uh, so the name Costello and Sons is more of a name than a, a yeah. s than an actual. So they're not actually working with you at the moment. They work from time to time. My daughter again, because she's an opera singer, she comes in and acts as my PA. Robert is something trying to, to develop the business in China, as well as working for another. So they're all involved in a way. They 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 will model for me. You know when. We yeah. were a catwalk show, and I used my sons on the catwalk. Which is nice. Which is an amazing thing. You know, five sons. Okay, I'm not George Armani, but that's one thing he can't do. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. So, you know, you... Yeah, yeah so Costello and Sons is a young label. Yeah. And at some time and in the future, forward. there's a oh, yeah. possibility. It's, there is longevity, for sure. Painting, play a bit of tennis. Where'd you play? Play, play in Putney. Putney. Uh, I, I live in Putney. Right. Yeah, Putney Tennis Club. Very nice. Very friendly little place. Very. You can wear anything you like. There's none of this 
white. You can wear white, you're out. Exactly. Yeah. No, no, it's, I, I, I just, I'm not cut out for that. Um, um, uh, yeah, I'm painting. Then I, I do work on weekends, you know, on the kitchen table. I do some sketching because you have to sometimes concentrate on something. Mm. So like this, this weekend now, I have to do some corporate wear drawings for uniforms and things. So I'll be doing that. Find a bit of peace and, uh, you know, watch the rugby. Um, weekends go too quickly, but maybe that's okay. I hate Mondays. Um, I really do. Certainly, um, Bob Geldof is Irish too. Huh? <laughs> Bob Geldof hated Mondays as well. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> he went to the Irish same thing. school. Yeah, yeah. Did you really? Yeah, Black Rock. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, that is yeah. funny. That I threw that out of the yeah. left field because yeah. I didn't know that at all. Yeah, that's quite funny. And 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 Brian O'Driscoll, the rugby player. Right. Yeah. All so it turned out a few interesting. Yeah. Yes, because you got some sort of recognition from them, didn't you? Oddly enough, yeah. How did you read that? Ah, you, See, that was weird. You've got to do your research. You for really it. have done. You're you're the first person to even mention that over here. Oh God, uh, I'm really bad on holidays because my wife doesn't book holidays. Right. She never books. I never bother, and so we always end up in Portugal on the. Um, Algarve. On the Algarve. Yeah. But it's fine. We, we stay in a, a sporting hotel, which is right on the front. It's not like a Sheraton or any of those. It's yeah. a very simple little place. And it's right on the beach. And um, you wake up in the morning, you go for your jog along the beach, you go, you go and swim in a wonderful outdoor swimming pool. You have breakfast, great breakfast, and that's the beginning of the day. And I love it. And it's simple and but it doesn't Very have basic. to be exhausting. It can just be somewhere that makes you feel and it's good. Near and it's easy. Exactly. And if you feel good, that's the perfect holiday for yeah. this Yeah. Oddly enough, Woodland would not have been painting. They wouldn't wouldn't have made any living. I wanted to be something in agriculture. I, I applied to the Irish, the American embassy, to go to um, Texas. Yeah. They stay, and and I wanted to be a cowboy. Just the age of six. So did I. I want to wander the, you know, on horseback and enjoy the American outdoors. That was my kind of. So who knows how I would have ended up? I don't going to say my wife, but it is true. That's right. It's very realistic. Paintbrush, being able to yeah. express myself when I'm traveling. And number three is my. Um, Converse. 